It's time for Mental Wellness Monday. So if you've been using the community tab here on YouTube, then you know it's basically social media posts for YouTube. And I do post a lot there, um, usually weekly. But if you missed this post, then I'm going to be sharing a little bit about that in today's video. So if you happen to see the curtain back there move, then you know it's your friendly uh, neighborhood for maybe a friend. <laughs> so just so you know, he is wandering around. Um, he's not necessary. Where'd he go? So he left out of this room. I don't know where he went, but he's around here somewhere. So if you see the curtain move or hear any noise back there, it's most likely him. Also, I do have the heater running. It is cold um, in this room. This room gets closed up. I don't use it as much as I should, <laughs> but um, it gets cold in this room. So just FYI, those are the things that are going on in the background. And during the editing process, I will try to eliminate as much background noise as possible. But this is just your public service announcement. Back to today's video. <laughs> uh, yeah, so long story short, I found my biological father after learning about him nine years ago. So this Mental Wellness Monday is going to be a little bit more of a story time, but there will be little pockets of um, mental wellness and where I am right now because of what's going on in my life. As you guys know, I had a cardiac event <laughs> happened on September the 11th of this year, 2024, if you're watching this video at a later date. But I just want to let you know that I'm doing well. And I have gone to my cardiologist. Unfortunately, there wasn't a lot that he could really like tell me differently, except for the fact that the levels of troponin, which is some kind of something in your system, in your blood work that shows up, that lets them know if you've had a heart attack, 19 is high. Um, and I don't have the stats. I didn't write them down. But the course that I was in the ER for the day that I went, um, remember, I went to urgent care first. They sent me to the ER. My troponin levels went from 50 something to 70 something to 255 and 19 is high which is why they were like oh my gosh you're having a heart attack long story short they think what happened to me is that at some point I had a virus the virus caused inflammation in my heart and some fluid in the pericardial sac which they're saying or my cardiologist was saying a little bit of fluid is not like a big deal do you hear your fur baby friend of course now he's meowing course because why not I'm filming I'm recording oh god come say hi okay can you say hi hi everybody she's not paying attention to me so I must make lots and lots of noise you like the view from up here okay put you down so um my troponin levels were extremely high. Um, what he's saying is it's most likely, because um, I, I kept, they kept throwing around different terminology, an in STEMI, um, oh God, I'm going to have to look up the word. All right, I'm going to look up the word. Okay, got my notes. Good Lord. Um it's hard to have your notes with you because I record on my iPhone and so my notes are all on my iPhone. So I just took a screenshot of it and now I'm using the iPad <laughs> to, to read the notes. So I had um, in STEMI type 2 because of the troponin levels being so high and a trivial partial, no, hard, hold on, trivial pericardial infusion was also there, and myopericarditis slash pericarditis. Now, the reason he's saying he's not 100% sure which one it was, and they're very similar, um, is because I did not have the MRI to the heart done yet. And he did give me the MRI office number, 
to call them again, which I've already called them three times, well, four times now, and no one ever answers the phone, you have to leave a message. <laughs> and then someone's supposed to call you back. This has been over a month now and no one has called me back. He said that he would have his nurse work on it too, getting me an appointment scheduled because I have a follow-up with him next month and he wants that MRI so that he can be more, um, like look for any kind of residual scar tissue or anything that he would be looking for for certain things to give me a more definitive answer. That being said, I can resume um, light exercise. I can resume like lifting things as I feel comfortable. And he said that the, the pain I've been still feeling in my chest, because I do still feel like um, not always a sharp pain, but almost like an ache. And sometimes I feel like my heart rate, um, my heart is like racing, but my heart rate's not going up. So he said, you're, he said, I'm going to feel that until that inflammation has gone down and it could take some time. It just could take some time. Um, so I'm on, the medicine was tweaked again. This is the third time the medicine has been tweaked. So he took me off of one thing, put me on something else um, that I was already on that I had gotten taken off of. So I am on a Lipitor. Um, I am on, oh gosh, I can't remember the other medicine, but it's the gout medicine. I'll put the, the word here, but the gout medicine is going to help the inflammation, which is really weird, but they found that this gout medication also helped inflammation in the heart. So this is what he has me on and it's a very low dose. So I'm, you know, happy for that. But I take that twice a day now. The first seven days was once a day. Now it's twice a day. Um, I can tell that I'm not having as frequent, um, I call them flutters in my chest or, or like movement or feeling or tightness or pressure in my chest. But I do have it like first thing in the morning. Um, I do have it. And if I'm doing too much, if I'm up at work, walking a lot, lifting a lot, bending over a lot, I am feeling that pressure in my chest. So I just try and monitor myself, kind of try to slow myself down, sit down when I can type thing. So I'm just kind of getting back, but also being mindful of where I am physically, how I'm feeling physically, and listening to my body say, hey, that might have been too much. Go ahead and sit down for the next 15, 20 minutes. So that's kind of where I am with that. But I do want to start getting back into some exercising, being in this room and using it for its intended purpose, which is meditating, yoga, and exercise. Like, why am I not in here? It's not just for random, you know, a video um, recording. So I need to get back in here. All that said, Another huge life event was the fact that I found my father. This is when your story time begins. If you read the post, then you know. Nine years ago, at the age of 44, I was told by my maternal aunt, or one of them, because my maternal grandmother had 10 children, five boys, five girls. I was told that the man that I grew up thinking was my father, whom I never knew um, because he passed away when I was quite young. Um, again, this person who I've been told my whole life was my father, who I actually, my second middle name is his last name, <sighs> was not my father. <laughs> so being told that, hey, I never thought blah, blah was your dad anyway. I always thought it was blah, blah. Yes, sir. Yeah, you want to come up here for story time? You want to sit up here for story time? Don't knock the camera over. Now you're going to wiggle the... Oh, yeah, you're wiggling it. You're wiggling it. Don't sniff my drink. If you're going to be up here, be still. Be still. I know, but you got to be still. You're knocking the whole tripod. I have my short tripod sitting on my um stand. On my, um what do you call it? Telescoping desk stand. It's one of those TikTok, TikTok shop made me buy it. <laughs> I'll show it to you in another video, but yeah, I love this desk. And I can wheel it into the bedroom or wherever. Really, now he's on my actual desk desk. Just 
walking back and forth all over the place. Okay, we'll just let him be for now until he knocks something over. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, um, that same day, um, I went to a function uh, where there were other like family members, like distant cousins and play cousins and stuff like that were there. And I remember this aunt asking two adult um, cousins, because I don't know if they're blood related or not. I just, I think we all just grew up calling each other cousins. Like, hey, who do you think uh, Crystal's father is? And they both said the same name that my maternal aunt had told me earlier in the day. And I'm like, why didn't nobody tell me this? Like, why, why am I 44 just hearing this? Why didn't any of you speak up to me as an adult and say, hey, just so you know, we think you should know this <laughs> information. Do with it, you know, what you will. But, and I guess in their minds, they were thinking that's not our information to give you. However, I'm being very meticulous with my words here. Growing up the way I grew up, knowing that I needed an adult to kind of be there for me in a way that I wasn't having an adult be there for me, I kind of feel like once I left the house, all bets was off. Y'all should have told me. And I left the house at 22, I want to say. So when you saw me next and I was no longer living in the house, you should have been like, hey, <laughs> let me tell you something. Let me talk to you over here in the corner. Because why? Why would you not want your niece to know this information about herself, knowing that this person was still alive and you were seeing him periodically, which I just found that out. I'll get to that part of the story. So I forgot to get back to this, but I found out that my aunt and my cousin were seeing my father periodically at a lounge slash oldies club that they frequented and never thought to tell me. So <laughs> once I got this information nine years ago, I immediately that day went onto Facebook, um, typed in the name that I was given, um, you know, a few pictures popped up and I went through and said, is it this one? Is it this one? And so my maternal aunt was like, yep, that's him right there. I immediately sent a Facebook messenger message and it was hella long. <laughs> um, this is who I am. This is who my parent is. This is where I grew up. This is the year I was born. Um, this is what I'm doing with my life right now. Um, don't need a father. Don't need a dad. Don't, I mean, I don't need you to like necessarily parent me because I'm an adult now, but I would love to just find out if you are my father. And if so, maybe we can have some sort of relationship slash friendship. Crickets. 100% crickets. And so in my head, I'm thinking this man probably read this and was like, Oh, hell no. You know, I don't think so. Um, I am, I, I'm not this girl's father. I'm not about to answer this. And so um, I kind of went on with life because that was like the right before I was getting ready to get on the road full time. So life just lifed, you know, I was on the road full time, traveling in the van, doing what I do. Um, but still per periodically I would think about um, this person being out there possibly that was my father. Um, so I would randomly send messages, you know, shorter messages, um, but pretty much saying the same things. This is who I am. This is who my parent was. This is my birthday. Um, I grew up in this area. Would love to hear from you. I totally understand if this is overwhelming for you, you know, that kind of thing. And I think over the nine years, I sent maybe four messages. I even sent a few messages to people who had the same last name in his friends list. I sent them messages as well. Um, again, crickets, no one. So after having this um, cardiac event is what I'm going to call it for now because we don't know exactly what it was. 
um, in September, I did one last Hail Mary on September 19th because I had the um, heart situation on the 11th. On September 19th, because I was still home, I hadn't gone back to work yet. September 19th, I looked him up again. Um, he has like 20 something Facebook friends. So I decided, you know what? F it. I'm going to send this message to every single one of these people. I'm just going to copy and paste it and send it to everybody. And we'll see what happens. And so I did. Literally that same day, I think it was that same day, I got a message from someone like, um, this is my uncle. Like, like who are you? And I'm kind of like, listen, I, I don't want to stir anything up, you know, kind of thing. Just, I think he's my father. I just want some answers after, you know, 53 years. I just want some answers. And she was like, basically like, okay, let me see what I can do. And I kid you not. <laughs> um, I don't know who she called and who they called or how it went. But um, I, I left my email in the um, email and my phone number. So I said, you know, you can text this number or you can email me here at this email. And I got an email saying, hey, you know, my name is such and such. You know, like, who are you? This is my uncle. So it was a gentleman who was emailing me and said, you know, like, basically send send me your number, you know. Um, and so I sent the number, said, you're going to have to text me first until I can save your number as a contact and then you can call me. And so we texted back and forth. Then we had a phone call. And then I was just explaining, hey, this is what it is. You know, I was told nine years ago that this person was my father and um so that's was his uncle and so he's like i mean i don't really talk to him like that but i can see um and relay this information and see what happens so i don't know maybe later that day maybe an hour or so um i got a call back saying hey he would love to talk to you here's his phone number <laughs> and i'm like Wow. Because, you know, I didn't expect anything to happen because of the back and forth off and on for nine years. Nobody ever answering me, him or the other people, few people that I had sent messages to in his friends list. Side note, nine years ago, when I first found out about him through my maternal aunt, I did ask her for help because I realized that some of the people in his friends list were people she knew. Um... And also people that her oldest daughter knew. So because I saw that they had her oldest, she doesn't have, my aunt doesn't have uh, Facebook and her oldest daughter does. And I saw the, you know how you see the um, mutual friends? Her oldest daughter was mutual friends with several people in his friends list. And I was kind of like, hey, you're mutual friends with these people. I even screenshotted it and was like, hey, you're mutual friends with some of these people. Could you please reach out to them and ask them to have him contact me? Here's, you know, with my, here's my number, give, you know, give him, give him my number. So all I got basically was, I don't want to get involved in that. You know, that's, that's, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get involved in that. I don't know. I guess it was too messy for them. Back to where we are. So I'm on the phone. I'm getting ready to call and I'm just like, um, hi, you know, hi, this, you know, this is Crystal. Um, and he was like, yeah, yeah, so so, so I might be your dad, huh? You know, kind of thing. And it's like, yeah, you know, you know, I give the name of the parent and I'm just like, you know, I don't know if you knew um, her by this name or her actual birth name. And I gave the birth name because um, the name was changed legally when I was a kid. So I'm like, um, I just want to know if you even be open and receptive to taking a um, paternity test. I just want to know. I was told this nine years ago. I did reach out to you nine years ago. And then that's when I found out that um, um, he doesn't really read. So that's why he wasn't answering the messages. So that makes sense. <laughs> but um, so I was like, you know, if you'd be willing, you know, I'd be willing to buy it and pay for it. And he was like, no, 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 I'll buy it. You know, as um, long as you come up and like help me do it. Cool. Okay. So he lives in Arlington. I'm in Virginia beach. And if you know anything about the East coast or anything, it's literally three hours away. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, sure. Um, we'll set a date for me to come up there. So, um, um, we went up, um, two weeks ago now, because not this past Saturday, 
I don't know when you're seeing this, but we went up <laughs> to um, do the DNA test. And we're both doing our little cheek swabs and talking. And I didn't really, I talked to him a couple times on the phone before going up there, but I didn't want to dive too deep into information because what if this man turns out not to be my dad? I don't want to invest his time and energy and my time and energy into getting to know each other. And it's like, oh, we're not daughter and we're not father and daughter. And now I know all this stuff about you. And okay. <laughs> So, um, literally, I want to say the Wednesday before we went up on that Saturday, I think it was the Wednesday or the Thursday, I did say to him on the phone, I don't know if you have a, see, um, had a pitch, was able to see a picture of me because I had sent a picture to what's now I know is my cousin, um, to say, Hey, this is what I look like. Um, don't know if you see a family resemblance, blah, 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 blah. But he said, yeah, you can send me a picture. So I sent him um, a picture. And then when I got off work, or no, I was at work and I saw his name pop up on my phone. And normally I don't answer my phone, but I thought maybe this was an emergency. So I excused myself. And he says, God dang it. Except he, I don't think he said dang it. <laughs> he said, I saw that picture and I said, I know this girl. He's been watching my Crystal Vanner channel for years now back when I was traveling the country at like the height of my channel because he was thinking about doing something similar with his truck and truck camper and somehow had stumbled upon my videos and had been watching me back in like the 2017 2018 2019 era like the height of my videos producing so I'm like wait are you kidding me right now he's like no as soon as i saw your picture i was like i know this girl that's that crystal vanna girl <laughs> he said i've been watching you all this time and i was just like trying to keep it together at work but also tearing up because i'm like can you imagine this man who literally just watches TV and YouTube and stuff because he's not very literate, so he doesn't really read. Watching this, seeing a lifestyle that he likes, finding a YouTuber that speaks to him or he seems interested in or has a some sort of draw to, and now, all this time later, it ends up being his daughter. Anywho, I'm not gonna cry on video. Y'all not gonna do it. Y'all not gonna get that out of me. Yeah, not doing it. <laughs> um, I have sniffled and cried a few tears. Um, I'm good. I'm good. I'm not going to cry. So we go up, we do the DNA test. Um, and I'm like, well, we should know hopefully within a week or so what's going on. And again, I just didn't want to say too much, give too much info, um, any of that. I got the email on Wednesday after the Saturday of us doing the DNA test saying that your results have been, um, um, are being processed and you will know by 8 p.m. on Friday. This was the 25th, October 25th, 2024, that I would know that Friday, which was the 25th. And I called him and said, hey, I just got the email saying that they got our results and they're processing it and we should know something by Friday at 8 p.m. and I'll call you as soon as I know. And he says, um, Okay, he said, I'm, I just, you know, I'm glad I could give you this opportunity and some closure. I said, well, hopefully it's not closure if it turns out to be positive. And he said, well, I just want you to know, even if it's not positive, I'd like to stay in touch with you because I really want to get my truck and truck camper together and maybe do some camping. Because he and I talked about camping, how I, I tent camp right now and stuff and how it would be great for him to do some camping with us. Um... And I was like, sure, of course, of course. You know, I talk to people all the time that I'm not related to. Um, and I'm even going to be helping someone get their minivan together um, here soon. Um, now that this heart stuff is getting uh, better. But I said, yeah, of course. So Friday, I get off normally around six o'clock. Friday at six, the email pops up. It's early now and I'm getting in the car. Um, because husband picks me up from work. He drops me and picks me up. And 
I say to him, I said, I just got the email and I'm afraid to open it. And he goes, you want me to do it? And I'm like, yeah. So I hand him my phone. He opens it. And it's not like you, it, click, it says click on, uh, uh, click, click to see results and you click it, but then you got to log in. And like, there's a couple things you got to do. And then he couldn't understand what was happening with all the numbers and letters and stuff. And I said, there should be a percentage somewhere on the paper. And if it's positive, it usually will say like 99.99 something, a bunch of nines. If it's not, then it'll say 0%, but there should be a percentage somewhere on that, on the screen. And he, he, he covers his face. So when he finds out his eyes don't show me, so he's got his, he's got his face covered and he's looking at my phone and he's looking at me and he's trying to find where the percentage is. And he goes, it's 99.9999, whatever it was. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. Like I call him and I'm like, he answers the phone and I'm like, well, you, 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 you the daddy, <laughs> you are the father, <laughs> like a Maury thing, you know, or paternity court. You are the father. And he's laughing. He's like, get out of here. And I'm like, nope, 99.99999. <laughs> so I said, um, I can screen, I can take a, a screenshot of it and send it to you. And he was like, yeah, I'd like that. So I took a screenshot of it and sent it to him. And it's just, I've just been. And that was this past Friday of the, of, the, of the recording of this video. Today is Monday that I'm recording this. And this was this past Friday um, that all this went down. And I've talked to two different cousins. Um, I'm going to North Carolina to see the one cousin who... Um, so the one, so, so going back to who I said, um, the one person had reached out to me after I sent the messages on Facebook to all his friends. She ended up being my cousin. And she's the one who got this ball rolling. So I can't wait to see her when I go back up to Northern Virginia because she lives in um, the Annandale area, which is weird because I know exactly the apartments she lived in, lives in, everything. Like I literally worked at the hair cuttery that's in front of her apartment complex. So she hasn't lived there long, but still, it's just crazy how I know that area like the back of my hand. So it's just nuts how most of them that are still, you know, living are still kind of in Virginia. So it's like, wow. So I, I have a lot of people I need to be visiting in Virginia. Um, I've got 53 years of making up to do and learning and, and, and getting to know people and seeing people and looking at photos. I can't wait to sit down and look at photo albums. I want to see who I look like, you know, learn people's names, all that stuff. But it's going to be crazy. So we do have a um, the cousin who I actually talked to on the phone who's named after my father he's my second cousin he um invited us down to north carolina he's right over the virginia north carolina border so literally like an hour and a half from me so we're gonna go hang out there next month i'm gonna go back up and see my dad that's so weird to say my dad i've never ever had a man that i called father or dad or anything like that um never had a stepfather nothing i've never used that word to anyone because I never had a dad. Um, so it's kind of weird. And I did call him back like a day later and say, hey, um, what do you want me to call you? Because up to this point, I've been calling him Mr. in his first name. And he was like, you, you can call me dad if you want. I was like, I mean, okay, that works. <laughs> never had a dad. So this will be cool. And I'm his only biological child that he knows of. I just want to spend as much time as I can. It is three hours away, but I would love to be able to go up there every weekend if I could, um, just to, you know, I want to, I want to get to know him and I want him to get to know me. So it's just, it's just, I'm feeling all kinds of emotions as you could imagine. Um, my first emotion is just, shock and awe and confusion um those were my first emotions then i started getting into sadness and anger because for most of my life he has lived within 20 minutes of where i grew up i spent from the age of about one to about almost 17 in one apartment complex which was literally 10 to 20 minutes from where he lives in Arlington. I was in Falls Church, Bailey's Crossroads area. And I'm like, you mean to tell me this whole time 
I could have had a father in my life. But I kept being told that this other man was my father and he was deceased. And this whole time I could have had a father. It, it angers me because what was the point? What was the point? And even if you weren't sure at any point in my life, you could have said, hey, I know I said this, but I'm honestly not 100% sure. This is the other person's name. Do with that information what you will. Like, what's the point? What's the point? And I just am not about... I can't. It upsets me and it, it, it bothers me so much that that was the route that was taken. Anyway, all that said, I have a lot of years to, to get back. Um, and I think about what could have happened to me last month when I had this heart situation. What if it didn't turn out positively? then I would have left this earth never knowing. So this not being your typical mental wellness Monday video, my mental state right now is kind of all over the place. I've been going through my mind playing out different scenarios, thinking about things in my youth that maybe could have been better or avoided. Um, the things that I went through, the abuses I suffered, through and dealt with the feelings and times of feeling unloved and not good enough, not knowing if there, not knowing there was a person who didn't even know I existed <clears throat> and if had known that I existed, maybe could have made the difference, that little difference in my life. Yeah, I'm kind of all over the place right now. Like, I don't want to, like, I, in my head, I'm like, would he move down here? Should I move up there? Like, I don't want to be far from him anymore. Like, I don't want there to be three hours distance between us anymore. Like legit, I'm like, do I just, now do I turn my life upside down and figure out how we can live close together or even live together? Like, like how, how do I, how do I like, and I don't know if any of those things are possibilities or even things that I'm going to decide on. It's just right now, I'm like, I don't even want to miss a moment anymore. Neither of us is getting any younger. Um, He was born in 1944. So he's going to be 81 soon. I believe that math is right. Um, I don't want to miss another moment. And it just is mind-blowing, mind-blowing, like mind-blowing. So I do want to end this video on a positive note. <laughs> um, I do want to thank Jewel, aka Miss Bohemian Soul, for being my very first Patreon patron. Thank you, Jewel. Um, I've had a um, Patreon for how many months now? I don't know. I started in the summer, so I don't know. Um, I want to say it was like June when I started. 
but thank you for being my first patron on Patreon. Thank you. Um, please go to my website if you would like to be a part of that. Um, and I want to thank the people over at the VFF Village uh, support group. And I'm going to list you guys' names here. Thank you so much, guys, for being over there. I appreciate you. Um, I appreciate your support over there. I know it's not a place where we are very active. I would love for that community to grow and be more active. There's so much good stuff in that group. Um, I try and post there a lot. I haven't posted much this last month just because of the health stuff, but I will get back to posting um, weekly posts over there. But I ask that if you are willing and wanting community to join us over there that is also on the crystalvanner.com website it's free there's no fees over there um it's a support community we want to support you on your journey you can support others on their journey you can be an encouragement you can receive encouragement inspiration all that jazz no matter what's going on with you we are there to support you, walk alongside you, lift you up, hold your hand, give you a hug, whatever it is you need. And it doesn't have to be a travel slash van life journey. It can be whatever. Listen, you might have a goal to, you know, lose 20 pounds. You might have a goal to, I don't know, renovate your kitchen, whatever it is, whatever kind of support you need. Maybe you're just lonely um, and alone right now. Maybe you um have a recent loss in life, whatever it is. We want to support you and be an encouragement to you. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. So, you want to say bye? Come on, let's say bye. So, from Seven and me, don't forget to be good to yourself, right? Be kind to others, and whatever your journey, enjoy it.